how are you guys doing tonight ladies and gentlemen here's two dudes one garage welcome welcome hi everybody uh excited to be back and uh go through this crypto journey with you guys yeah yeah let's get right into it and we uh kind of touched on earlier about um like stable coins and tether etc so uh Leo just wanted to go a little more into into these. We uh, talked about it on an earlier podcast, and we didn't explain them. So, touching back up on a bunch of a uh, bunch of points. Here you go. All right. So, uh, USDT, as we talked about, is the United States dollar tethered to the dollar. So, one for one, one dollar, one USDT. The thing about it is, when you do uh, receive USDT, um, there are three different kinds. There's an Omni. ERC20, TRC20. Um, so looking down at this chart, uh, uh, when making USDT, USDT transfers, many users present with a choice of different uh, chain types that are available, which is a point of user interface uh, that situates, uh, they do not know which uh, chain to choose when depositing or withdrawing. That's a big issue because if you send TRC20 to ERC20 wallet, congratulations, you just lost all your money. It disappeared in thin air. Uh, the difference between the three different uh, chain types are described in detail. So, uh, biggest differences are, you know, their addresses um, and the network. So, Omni is this is new to me. Uh, is a BTC, which is Bitcoin. ERC is uh, Ethereum, and TRC twenty is Tron. Um, so obviously we all know that Bitcoin is a little sluggish. Takes two hours to transact something. We don't want that. Uh, ERC-20 takes uh, 10 minutes, uh, well, if you have time. Uh, TRC-20 takes a few seconds, instantaneous almost. Um, so uh, the big part of this that pretty much tells or well, helps people choose is, what is it gonna cost a person receiving the money? So if I send Alex $100 of Bitcoin in Omni and USDT, he's only gonna get, what is that, $65? Um, if I send him hundred dollars of ERC 20, he's only going to get $70. But if I send him hundred dollars in TRC 20, he's going to get $98 that those are the fees to ledger that transaction in the blockchain. That's pretty much the deciding factor of everything. So yeah, it's good to know, especially if you're new into the crypto and you're, and you're trying to buy something or you're trying to send something or you're, you're just trying to use it for what it is money, you know, yeah. <clears throat> and obviously people can argue, uh, safety quality and value like some people are always going to value that bitcoin omni uh tether transaction if you're doing a very large transaction and you're not on ethereum you know maybe it's worth doing but it's all debatable um kind of like what your risk tolerance is and what you want to do how much you know fees you want to pay um i guess i'd have another question here because we're I, I know that uh, ethereum has uh variable gas fees that can be very high so can this skyrocket or is it a fee on top of the 30? Yeah, it's just a flat fee. Um, I haven't seen it fluctuate at all. Um, it's a set fee per transaction. I mean, a withdrawal limit. So you can't send $30 right. or 30 SDT and, and, and the recipient receive nothing. Um, so some, some of these um, require hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars. I'm assuming Bitcoin might require thousands of dollars, ERC hundreds of dollars, and TRC, I think it's only $50 or $30 to, to send, to use that service. Yeah, so just be careful when you're sending money, um, or I'm sorry, when you're sending uh, crypto, that you choose the right wallet and you choose the right icon, you will see on the top corners, the top or right left corner, it will, it'll tell you like, which one do you want out of the three? And then it will click on it. You'll send, it'll give you a limit amount, withdrawal limit amount. You, you, uh, reach that limit amount, minimal limit amount. Um, and then I'll give you what you're sending and what the person is going to receive. And then you confirm your transaction. So just be aware that there are three different types and try not to lose your money. All right, all right. I thought we would get into uh, some of the celebrity NFTs because once again, we touched on that a little bit. And uh, yeah, and, and like kind of like a boilerplate warning, whatever, like a lot of these like celebrity NFT things are like pretty strange or like just a money grab or, you know, I'm, I'm sure some of them are like pretty legitimate. And I think some of the coolest examples of um, NFTs of like 
bands that they'll either put their music on nfts or what they do is they'll sell you tickets to the concert and what level of nft nft you buy you get extra benefits like you get first row or you get like merch when you go and obviously it's like probably outrageous amounts of money but like you know i've heard of bands selling like nft tickets for like you know lifetime or a year or two and it's you know probably tens of thousands of dollars but you get like you know premium vip uh, experience and that's it's a really nice neat way to do an nft i think that's like one of the cooler ones i've seen but uh yeah let's get into some of these uh some of these projects that uh celebrities are doing yeah so as Alex was saying, um, artists are releasing music, um, people are releasing tickets. Um, so a non-fungible token pretty much is an authenticity of something that you're putting in the blockchain. So a ticket can be authentic to one to one because of its serial number. Uh, you can put an album out there of a song and or an album and it will be in the blockchain and no one can, you know, resell it basically as a legitimate one because they won't be able to prove it it's not in the blockchain so that's a beautiful thing about an nft uh, yeah so basically we just wanted to have some fun here and go through some of the you know we we also touched on some of the celebrity stuff and you know some of it's kind of wild and crazy and some of it's a little more legit but um yeah so we're just going to go through some of these nft projects yeah so number one we have Lindsay lohan's first first sona all right so i like that i like that first sona it's a furry persona there you go that's right <laughs> what is this exactly what it is right? know, it's furry. yeah Lindsay lohan's friends of the cartel you know and you know whoever knows what she's implying here i don't know but congrats to the winner claiming first minted <laughs> Oh gosh, let's give him a howl in the comments, mutts. So yeah, okay, that's kind of that's kind of ridiculous. I don't, I don't think I would buy that. I'm not in the market, but uh, a lot of people cashing in. Let's let's continue. Let's continue. <laughs> Snoop Dogg's NFT sitcom with Harlem Globetrotters. Check it. An NFT sitcom feat. Me, Junebug, the Harlem Globetrotters. All right, all right. Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction Friction. Oh man, these are <laughs> these are just something else, man. I don't know. Grimes Army of Space Babies. I mean, you can't hate him for the creativity. Jack Dorsey's first tweet. I've heard about this one back from 2006. He minted, put on the blockchain. I like it. I like it. Eminem's NFT beat. Okay. All right. Shady Con. Shady Con. Kings of Leon, you're looking at phone minted NFT time in disguise. Winner of the auction will be phone. Okay, interesting. I like it. Paris Hilton's incredibly cute NFTs. Hmm. I don't know if we should like play all these or not, but Tony Hawk's last Ollie. Wow. They're getting they're uh, getting creative here, aren't they? <laughs> I've seen like the NBA and stuff do like uh, you know famous clips and clip NFTs. Sean Mendez digital digital clothes digital clothes. What are we doing? Oh yeah, I really didn't like this one. Um, yeah, Stan Lee. Somebody was using his likeness and account to post from the grave. I don't know. This one's pretty. This one's pretty not, you know, he's trying to promote something and he's not alive. It's kind of sad. John Cena's NFT mistake. What? <laughs> I don't, I don't know what's going on here. There's a, there's a lot. It looks like a, looks like a Mario, like three rip off. I don't know. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah, even has the wing, but it's actually a little. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. Somebody yeah. didn't. Somebody didn't proofread, proof check. I want. She buys herself back. Okay. 
yeah, anyways, uh, some wild and crazy stuff. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more crazy stuff out there. Um, a lot of it seems disingenuous or not that, you know, for the people that are really into them, I think it's, you know, it's cool and they could get hyped. But for the rest of us, we're kind of just like, well, what are these people doing? Um, if you want to buy, you know, some of the Ethereum or VV comic books, whatever, I think people will, you know, not raise an eye at you, but, you know, a fursona, I don't know about that one. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, I really, when I look at NFTs, I want to see five years from now, what's that NFT going to be used for, like a use case for it? Because NFTs will be used, especially in the metaverse. And as far as these unique, one of a kind, licensed by the artist or famous person's NFTs, um, I really don't see the value. I don't see the value in it. But if you're a diehard fan, I mean, more power to you. But for me, I'll pass on that. Yeah, for sure. I'm not. I'm not interested. I. Uh, I mean, I have a hard time. I think most like people would have a hard time justifying spending thousands of dollars on anything, much less digital art. Like if they don't think it's going to hold value, right? Um, probably have a better use case for my money. <laughs> but uh I honestly i'd rather just buy some more good old uh you know bitcoin ethereum etc any promising projects